coming quickly to the cause of anemia in neonates, we are trying to say, the quick clinician has asked, my baby is anemic, okay, now you have told me, now what are the causes? These are broadly speaking four different causes in babies. First is physiologic process, as I have already explained to you, because of the fall in the... This is the commonest cause of anemia in the neonatal period. Normal physiologic process of shutdown and it causes normocytic normochromic anemia. Physiologic anemias usually do not require extensive evaluation or treatment. And this anemia in term neonates after birth is due to the abrupt rise in the tissue oxygen level, increase in oxygenation due to normal breathing, negative feedback of erythropoietin and reduc a reduction in erythropoiesis. As I said, shorter lifespan, uh, lifespan of the uh, red cells, the hemoglobin concentration may fall over first to two months of life and a level of 9 to 11 also, one should really not worry about in a one-month-old or a two-month-old baby. Don't call them anemic and don't start investigating them. By investigating, you will create more of anemia in those babies. He, HB then after that remains stable for the next several weeks and slowly starts rising after one or two months and comes to the normal level for the toddlers and the children. Now, preterm babies, it is more pronounced in fall of hemoglobin occurring earlier and is referred to anemia of prematurity. Mechanism is similar to the ones which I've just described and it is due to lower erythropoietin production, shorter lifespan, rapid growth of preterm babies, and more frequent phlebotomies that we have created and can bring down the level to a very dangerous level and they may require sometimes support by the RBC transfusions. But that depends from individual baby to the other baby. Coming to the second, blood loss or hemorrhage, which is the next common cause in uh, neonates. Number of reasons are there for the hemorrhage. You can see the whole list. I don't have to go through it, the whole thing. The blood loss, basically hemorrhage, can be in the prenatal phase, perinatal phase, or postnatal or postpartum hemorrhage. In units, absolute blood volume is low, and you can see that what is the volume, it is much lower. And acute blood loss, as little as 15 to 20 ml. Imagine, five times if you have collected blood from that baby, you have caused like a hemorrhage situation. So be careful in sampling the babies very often and we might be creating a hemorrhage-like situation. Prenatal, lot of causes are there, which may be fetal, fetal maternal, twin to twin, cord malpha, very whole lot of causes are there, which are prenatal hemorrhage. And coming to these usually occurs spontaneously. This is fetal to maternal hemorrhage, amniocentesis, or some versions which have been done during pregnancy and it can affect about 50% of the pregnancies. Massive blood loss is defined as more than 30 ml, which occurs in three in 1,000 pregnancies. During delivery, we know that these may be the reasons which are there, which can make the hemorrhage can be there and the baby can become anemic. And after delivery or just postpartum, there may be certain other conditions which can cause hemorrhage and cause the anemia in the baby. If you have a situation like any one of these, you know what is the cause of anemia in those cases. A few words about twin to twin transfusion. It is unequal sharing of blood between one twin to the other twin and affects about 13 to 33% of monogenic, monochorionic uh, pregnancies. When significant blood transfer, uh, transfer occurs, the donor twin becomes very anemic, whereas, and can be, develop heart failure, whereas the other will become polycythemic. 
and can have hyperviscosity syndrome. A difference of five grams between one tetrain to the other is usually less than that is acceptable, more than that is definitely twin to twin transfusion. Coming to the third situation, which is the increased red cell destruction or hemolysis, which is another cause of anemia in our neonates, can be due to any of these conditions, immunization, congenital or acquired red cell defects. And these are the causes of immune mediated hemolysis. Looking at the blood pictures and the retic counts where there are certain indications which tell you that this may be RH hemolytic disease because there are mainly a lot of polychromasia and RBCs but very few, retic uh, very few spherocytes whereas in ABO incompatibility spherocytic hemolysis occurs and you can differentiate on the smear itself if you have the good smear with you that what may be the reason Sometimes the ABO incompatibility is difficult to confirm by Coombs test, which may still be negative, but the situation between mother and the baby should be there to suspect. But if you have spherocytes in your neonatal smear, you can tell your um, neonatologist that this is the situation which is possible. Maybe minor blood group also, if it is not ABO blood group. Red cell membrane defects, whole lot of them are there, which can cause neonatal anemias. And if you see spherocytes, these are the conditions which can present in the neonatal period. And pycnocytes are the ones which show red cell membrane defects, usually seen in the neonatal periods. And this is PK enzyme deficiency. Coming to the other acquired causes, there are a whole lot of causes which can cause hemolysis in the neonatal babies. Coming to the third one, which is decreased RBC production, can be, ca can be causing anemia in the neonate, and these are the conditions commonly. There is a whole list which may be there. How do you evaluate? Physical examination definitely helps. Most of the times, we in the lab do not get to see these babies. The blood is coming to us from the neonatal units, but you must ask your physician for certain things. And they may tell you whether it's tachycardia, hypotension, point, uh, pointing more towards acute blood loss, hemolysis if jaundice is there, and other ABO or small uh, minor blood group incompatibilities, G6PD, or whatever may be the reason for the hemolysis. So fell hematomas, large hematomas can give rise to microangiopathic-like picture in the blood, and they might be causing jaundice as well as hemolysis. Hepatosplenomegaly suggests hemolysis, congenital infections, heart failures, and hematomas, ecchymosis, petechia suggests bleeding, diathesis. Congenital anomalies make suggest that bone marrow failures may be adding on to the problem of that baby. So in the differential diagnosis, these are very important factors which we should be taking into account and asking our pediatricians for these histories. Very important if there is any family history of significance or is there any family history of bleeding diathesis, jaundice, and what is the ethnicity of that baby. Anemia in neonate, the maternal history is also very important, so you must ask the mother's history for all these conditions. And for evaluation, this is what we do most of the time when we are evaluating in our laboratory a baby which is anemic. That's the algorithm that we follow. That is the center point is the reticulocyte count. Low, then you know marrow failure syndromes. And high, then you go around the algorithm and you come to your diagnosis. Many times still we cannot reach the conclusion.